Hello again, everybody. The next car that you've selected to view on ClassicMuscleCars.com is another new arrival here. And this is a car that I want to tell you a little bit about what the history of these are. This is a 69 Roadrunner, full 46 pack liftoff hood, super track pack 410 Dana Posi four speed car. Now, this is the closest thing to a factory produced race car that you would find or what you could buy in 1969. These are heck of a car. This car is the fourth fastest muscle car of all time. If any of you out there have the 50 fastest muscle car list, this is number four on the list. And guess what? The fifth fastest is a 70 Hemi Cuda, a lot smaller, a lot lighter than this car. This is 390 horsepower and this is plenty of punch and get up and go. It's one of the fourth fastest muscle cars in the history of muscle car production. So it's very unique. They didn't make a lot of these. Now this is an M code. Now I want to tell you what M code means. We're going to start educating some of you a little bit about what these cars are, how to determine what they are. It would take a long time, but in video, we're going to give you the basis, uh, uh, general go around, okay? And an M code car means that in the VIN, this car was built with a 446 pack. If you look at the VIN numbers on any of these cars, and Jeremy can show you this when he comes around and does a, a visual overview of this car, this car is RM23M. The M stands for 446 pack on 1969. This is also called the 1969 and a half Roadrunner with this option on it because that's when the car first came out. So on all Mopars, if you look at the fifth uh, letter in the VIN number, that will tell you what the engine is. That's why a lot of these cars today have become so popular with collectors because it makes it a whole lot easier to be able to document what this car was. It's very hard to do on a lot of GM products because you can't get any support documentation from the factory or the manufacturer to let you know what that car truly was. A lot of the cars that were produced by GM was very difficult to read a VIN and it would not tell you what motor was in that car. They started that practice in 1972. Even though Mopar Corporation, Chrysler Corporation in the 60s was the third man on a totem pole in terms of sales, the lower uh, uh, manufacturer, they were actually very sophisticated in their system of how they documented these cars. And it makes it very easy for us uh, 30 plus years later to be able to determine what this car was, what motor was in it, and what it was built with. A lot of these cars have broadcast sheets. But the great thing is if you don't have a broadcast sheet, all the information is a fender tag located on the driver's side and Jeremy when he does this overview of the car will point this out to you all the information that this car was built with was on this so-called fender tag and the good thing about it is if you don't have a fender tag which sometimes when the cars was painted it's just two Phillips screws they fall off they're gone if you have the broadcast sheet you can still see from the broadcast sheet how the car was built or equipped. But in a car like this, it's critical. You have to have an M code on a 69 and a half Roadrunner, or guess what? It's not a 446 pack car. So you see what I'm saying? It's very important that you know by the VIN what engine was in that car. And it makes it very easy to document what these cars were because of the fact that you could tell from the VIN number what engine was put in it, number one. Number two, you have a fender tag. Number three, you can most likely find a broadcast sheet. But if you're missing two of those and the VIN is there, you're still gonna know what the car is. In this case, you know for sure if we didn't have a fender tag, broadcast sheet, any information on the car, we still know that this is a 446 pack car. So that's a very unique part of these vehicles. Also, on Chrysler cars, you have alternate VIN numbers. There's different locations for the different cars, but if you know where to look, you can correspond the VIN number, the last uh, six, seven uh, uh, numbers on the VIN to the matching numbers on the car so that you can make sure that that car was also built uh, with the same components. You have to look at the rivets too. That's another issue that we've talked about in some of our broadcasts. So if you listen to some of our broadcasts, we go into a little bit more detail with that. But um, 
these cars were incredible and I've had several in the past and uh, we're getting known now for doing a lot of things with Mopars because we do like a lot of Mopars and we like fast cars here that's one thing for sure LS6 is 450 horsepower. We were setting, standing next to a GSX right here. This is another stage one ground pounder car. These are awesome muscle cars. Uh, Jeremy's right next to a, a 383 Dart GTS. Very rare. There's not very many of those made either. And the car is just gorgeous. So we're having a lot of fun with what we're doing here with these cars. And uh, we're bringing in different cars every day. Now I will tell you that this particular car came in. It's already sold. We got it in uh, yesterday afternoon. There was already people that wanted to see it. Gentlemen came out today. It's, it's already spoken for, it's done, it's gone. But we wanted to go ahead and do the video on the car because we wanted to educate you a little bit about numbers and how you can determine what this car is and so on and so forth. One more thing I will add too that I forgot because when I get on a roll and a spiel, I just keep going. I don't, I don't have a script so I don't know what I'm doing, I just talk, okay? One of the uh, other uh, real important features of this car, you have to look for an A12 that's on the uh, fender tag. The A12 means that this was originally a 383 car that was converted to 446 pack. That's what that means. It was a 383 Roadrunner that was converted the A12, that's what it stands for. So those are things that you have to look for if you're looking for a true 446 pack four speed car. So um, this is a beautiful example. I, I was uh, getting to the point that I wanted to make that we do have right now currently two other six pack four speed cars that are available here. Uh, one of them isn't here yet, one is out and we're doing some work to it. And most all of the cars that we get, they come in and uh, we're, we're going to send them out, we do things to them. And, and this particular car, uh, the other one that I was talking about, the six pack four speed is a GTX that's out right now currently. The other one that is coming in is ready to pull in on the showroom floor. What we're telling people to do right now is to give Ed a call at 847-526-5950 or you can give a message to Jeremy. Jeremy is now here answering the phones to help us because we're so busy now. And he's also behind the camera doing videos. Hey, Jeremy. <laughs> And uh, he's still helping with the radio show, but we're getting so busy here that things are moving quite rapidly and we would appreciate it if you'd call us up. Let us know what you're looking for and uh, <clears throat> we'll be out there looking for you. I will let you in on a secret here and I'm making it uh, known to the public right now, okay? I do have the ability right now, if you're interested, to put not one, but two 70 Hemi Cuda convertibles, one automatic, one four speed, out on the market. So if you're interested, again, call Ed, 847-526-5950, and uh, we can give you some more information about that. And please, serious inquiries only on those two particular cars. So Jeremy's going to take you around. Unfortunately, we already sold the car, so I can't take it out and have a little bit of fun with it. But we have a ground pounder GTX that is going to be coming in here next week. The weather is going to improve and we're going to start getting outside and doing some super burnouts. And I guarantee you when this car gets here, we are going to smoke the entire front of the building out. I guarantee you we're going to do a 300 foot burnout. You won't be able to see the sign classymusclecars.com. You won't even see the building because we are going to bury it in smoke and I can't wait till it gets here because it is a hot GTX 440 ground pounder engine that was built by RHS. RHS is Racing Head Service and I've uh, known this company for years They're out in Memphis, Tennessee and I'll tell you what, those boys down there really know how to build some muscle car powered engines and this car is equipped with it. So I can't wait, we're going to have a lot of fun and you know what Jeremy, take everybody for a little spin around and show them a historical 69 and a half in code 446 pack 4 speed Dana Track Pack Roadrunner. That's a tough act to follow from Tony there. 446 barrel. Let's take a look at this puppy. Kind of pristine looking. I should take this hood off so we can get a better look at that. Stand by, I'm going to do that. Presto changeo, no hood. Now we can get a closer look at this spectacularly beautiful, immaculate engine compartment. One large block there. 
Uh oh, what's that? Voice of Roadrunner. Okay, fine. And here's one of those fender tags that Tony was talking about. Let's see if we can focus in on that and get some contrast. Maybe Nightshot will help. Yeah, that's much better. It gives you all the information about how this car was built. And of course, the standard VIN through the, through the glass. Get a shot at those three deuces on top of the Edelbrock. What a fun car. Let's see what we've got here. Nice GTS, red. Pontiac convertible. There's the GSX, sold. Lots of fine muscle here. I'll run around to the other side, because that's the only side I can get in on. And we'll check out, we'll check out the interior. Looks like it's time for a night shot. We lose our color, but we can see what's happening. There's the four-speed non-council with a really nice boot. Factory AM. Nice clean interior. And there's the Roadrunner on the dashboard. Let's check out the back. Once again, nice and clean. No, that's the car, it's not me. Lose the night vision. We'll check out the trunk. And inside we see, once again, nice and clean. Night vision, there you can see the whole thing. Excuse me, night shot, trademark of Sony Corporation. Nice and clean. Someone's got themselves one heck of a ride here. But once again, we're gonna get, we have more of these coming in. So don't forget to keep on checking back.